Who made this? For whom was this made? Is it from a reliable source? During the COVID-19 outbreak, only trust official information sources and credible media outlets. Do not share unverified information. This is a message from UNESCO. Radio Thailand News, broadcast from the public relations department of the Royal Thai Government. On AM 918, FM 88, FM 95.5 and FM 107. For advertising inquiries, please email us at radiothailand at outlook.com. Chinese ban on pineapple imports from Taiwan has sparked a flood of patriotic buying of the fruits and forced restaurants to come up with inventive new menu choices. However, it has also left many questioning Taipei's overwhelming economic reliance on its giant neighbor. While much of the island's pineapple crop is consumed at home, 90% of its overseas shipments had for sale in the vast Chinese markets. Some analysts fear that this reliance leaves Taiwan's farmers at the mercy of Beijing, which views the island as its own territory and has vowed to reclaim it by size if necessary. On March 1st, China imposed a ban on pineapples, citing the discovery of pests, sending panic among the fruit farmers, fearing that their livelihoods will be affected. The ban has led the government in Taipei to put out a call for solidarity with social media seeing calls for consumers to buy pineapples while restaurants come up with ever more ways to add the fruit to their offers. Among the food choices now on offer are pineapple salmon pasta, pineapple seafood rolls, pineapple shrimp balls with red curry, fried rice, pineapple chicken, and bento boxes featuring the fruits with meat. Australian casino company Crown Resorts has disputed some findings of an inquiry that accused it of enabling money laundering. The head of a probe into the company and a second Australian state made the statement in an apparent split from the company's public apology for wrongdoing. Last month, a probity inquiry in the state of New South Wales declared Crown Resorts unfit to run a 2.2 billion Australian dollars, that's 1.7 billion US dollars, Sydney Casino, after finding the company dealt with organized crime syndicates. The finding also indicates that Crown Resorts allowed money laundering and disregarded the safety of a dozen and a half staff jailed in China in 2016 for breaking that country's anti-gambling laws. In opening remarks at the Victoria Inquiry, the retired federal court judge presiding over the hearings, Ray Fickenstein, had said he had written to Crown to ask if it accepted the Sydney findings in the hope of avoiding repetition. He said the Crown companies do not accept in terms the findings made. Crown did, however, accept its unpublished response, the overall finding that it was unsuitable for a license in Sydney. Still, it maintained that it was fit for its license in Victoria because of measures it had already taken to improve governance. 